Well, it was a cold winter day when I pulled out another antenna, something that I bought off of Amazon, and said, you know, I need to test this antenna and see if it's any good at all. Why did I buy this antenna? Well, as you'll see, it has orange doodads. That's right, I bought it because it has orange doodads. And it's a dual band antenna and you never know. You wonder about some of these inexpensive antennas, are they gonna do well? Well, let's take it out of the box, assemble it, and let's put it through its paces on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, it's time to review another antenna. And as we saw in the introduction, this one is off of Amazon. Now, most of us have probably been on Amazon from time to time looking for various things, and you might look for a ham radio-based item, and you'll come across these fairly inexpensive antennas. Now, what caught my eye were the little orange doodads on this antenna. It's a dual-band antenna. It's not that difficult to make one of these, and there are plenty of good ones out there, but it had those orange doodads, and I thought, I got to get one of these and just try it out, because sometimes you're impressed and sometimes you're not, and it would be kind of interesting to see if something this inexpensive, but it's got to be a little bit better with those orange doodads. So let's pull it out of the box, and let's see what comes with this antenna. So right out of the box, this is directly from Amazon, uh, there's not a whole lot. Uh, we've shown you a number of antennas on this channel. This has the uh, coax with the R, uh, the uh, SO239 on it, and uh, 259, excuse me, and uh, a felt magnetic base or a felt on the bottom of this magnetic base. It's about a three inch magnetic base. Also in the box, in a nice, we'll say, sleeve, is the antenna itself. Now, if you look closely, it is a little bent. It came out of the box that way. It didn't hurt anything. I didn't try to straighten it, but it's just a little bit bent. And then it does have a little washer on the bottom to help make uh, a contact, but also to prevent moisture from getting into the base where you screw it in. And that's kind of where we are. So now what we're going to do is put it together, which really only entails screwing this part in, and away you go. You can see the orange uh, bridge there between the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter keeps them apart, keeps them at a nice distance from one another, and you just circle it around the magnetic base to get it installed. Not difficult at all. Could you add something else on the bottom? Maybe some dielectric grease? I don't know. It's not really metal to metal, but I did tighten it you know, hand tight to what I thought would probably be best. And with that washer on the bottom, it should keep moisture out of the base where it screws in. And that's it, folks. It is not much to install or assemble this antenna. So that part of it I like. I mean, I like simple things. I'm a simple man. Now we're going to take it outside. And as we saw also in the introduction, my part of Kentucky got six inches of snow, so I uh, uh, took it outside, put it in the middle of the truck roof. Most of these antennas will operate much better in the middle of the roof, and then all we have to do is just hook up the SWR machine uh, analyzer here and just see what kind of SWR we're getting. Now, don't let that reading fool you. My uh, uh, connector at the top's a little bit loose, so I will make a hand adjustment so that it is actually uh, reporting correctly. And we'll see that it's coming in at about 1.5 at 147.17. Now I did do a full sweep. It covers the entire two meter band, but for our repeater, which is at 146.880, it will be in really good shape at 1.5. And so that part worked out really, really well. Next, I moved it to the back right corner like some of the other antennas that we've tested just to see if it would work out better from an SWR standpoint. And sure enough, it came in at 1.1, 1.2 at that back right corner. So it actually did better on the SWR. Doesn't mean the way this antenna is architected, it will perform well at that location. But from an SWR standpoint, the amount of power going out would work out nice. Same location, how about 70 centimeters? It is a dual band antenna. We're coming in at 1.5 in that back right location, but let's move it 
back to the middle location of the roof. Let's check our 70 centimeter SWR and let's see how we're looking there. We were at 1.5. We make our little adjustment here, 146.91, really close to our repeater frequency, and that comes in at 1.5. So the 70 centimeters and the two meters both came in and this in this middle position at 1.5 SWR. Now let's take it out into the field and let's see how it comes across on the uh, signal strength and reporting from uh, fellow members. This is KY4 BDP Mobile testing a new antenna. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Steve. Uh, testing out an antenna and uh, going to do a video on this and put it up a little bit later and uh, just wanted to see how well I'm getting into the repeater. Well, you're pretty scratchy on my end. I'm going to move the antenna to another location on the vehicle and I will come back in just a little bit and see if we can maybe get a little bit better uh, read on each other. KY4BDP, uh, please stand by. Alrighty, so we had the antenna on the back corner, similar to uh, other antennas that we've done that seem to do better over there. This one's probably going to do better in the middle of the roof of the truck but the SWR wasn't quite as good but it's not always about SWR so let's check in with the repeater again and let's see how we do this is KY4 BDP mobile having moved the antenna to see if we're getting into the repeater a little bit better giving me full scale everything's fine on your end apparently yeah, this is a big difference. Uh, I had it on the back right corner, similar to uh, other antennas that we've put back there, and just doesn't get out well because it's not able to project, and the back plane is not uh, set up for it that way on the back right. But now in the middle of the roof, as you said, it's full scale even on the return. You're that. How's your SWR check? SWR in the middle of the roof was about 1.5, so not bad at all, but uh, on the back right corner it was coming in at about 1.2, so it was a little bit better on the SWR, but again as far as projecting the signal, it wasn't doing very well. So SWR better, but barely getting into the repeater and I could barely hear you over the noise. Now in the middle of the roof, a slightly higher SWR, but it's definitely able to project better out to the repeater 20 plus miles away that you've got just a little bit of static in there you know a little crackle going on but uh everything's uh, you're audible roger that and on the receive it's very quiet for you so uh, doing really well and uh, for this particular antenna the middle of the roof is going to be the best bet which is pretty common for antennas of this uh, nature do you by chance have an opportunity to switch over to the 440 I think I have the 440 programmed into this radio. I've just got the uh, 2 meter and the uh, D star in this one. No worries. I'll just switch over to the 440, and even if I just get the repeater's reply, that'll at least give me an opportunity to test it. It's a dual band antenna, so I'll hop on over to 440, and uh, we'll see if we can get the repeater reply, or you never know. Somebody may hear me and reply in addition. Thanks for all your help. KK4YUG. This is KY4BDP Mobile. All righty, so I've switched it over to the 70-centimeter repeater. And uh, hopefully we'll get at least the repeater uh, uh, ID coming back. This repeater is not used as often, but we do run it, and it's a good repeater. It's a Yesu repeater. So we'll see how well we get into the repeater, given that this is a dual-band antenna, and uh, here in the middle of the roof. And as we saw with the SWR checks, SWR for 440 was around that 1.4, 1.5 range.
KY4 BDP Mobile uh, testing out a new antenna and uh, wondering if anybody is listening on this frequency can give me a, a signal report. So we can see it's not coming back full scale, but it's still quite good. KY4BDP AC4DM Well, good afternoon, Mr. Don. I was thinking you were probably monitoring uh, the 70 centimeter repeater, as you always do. How do I sound uh, utilizing the uh, other frequency on this antenna? getting in quite well. Go ahead. Roger that. Uh, you're not full scale uh, on the way back coming from the repeater, but uh, you sound great. Uh, it's, uh, like you said, uh, almost full quieting. So I think it's doing a pretty good job, and uh, I'm pleased uh, with this antenna as far as what it's able to do at this point. Roger on that. As I said, uh, uh, detect no... no uh, problem, you know, in your signal. Uh, audio is good and clear, and uh, uh, you're uh, no static that I can detect or anything of that nature, so no reason why you couldn't make contact. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks so much, Roger, on that, and uh, thanks for coming back in on this particular test, and uh, I'll let you go. AC4DM, this is KY4BDP Mobile. Alrighty, so what I've done is I've gone back to two meters, uh, to our two meter repeater frequency. I was using low power, and so that's why Steve may have been hearing a little bit of static as my radio was just putting out about five watts. So I bumped it up to full power, and let's see if Steve hears me a little bit better. This is KY4 BDP testing an antenna as well as bumping up the power on my radio. KK4YUG, are you still listening? K4YUG here. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. I just uh, changed the power setting on my radio to full power now, and I just wanted to see if it was as scratchy as maybe it was a little while ago when I was on low power. The negative. You are full quiet and no background hisses of any kind going on. It sounds good. Well, that is exactly what we want to hear. Well, thanks so much again for hanging out with me, uh, Steve and uh, AC4DM. I know you're also monitoring this channel. Thank you both for helping me out with this uh, review. And uh, we're going to head back to the house, check a little bit of APRS information, and then uh, we'll be putting this video out very soon. KY4BDP for AC4DM and KK4YUG. Thanks, fellas. So would I recommend this antenna based on observations, SWR? Uh, yeah, I, this is a, not a bad antenna for what it is. Obviously, when you pay very little for an antenna, you might wonder about its longevity. But as far as just basic utilization, right now I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go back into the next segment, and we'll summarize what we've got, how much we paid, but I recommend it. We'll be right back. So we come back to the house and I always like to see how I was getting into the APRS Digipeter. And you can see in the middle where my house is, going towards Mount Victory on the far right, it didn't start hitting the APRS unit until about midway. And then you can see the magenta line starting uh, there in White Lily as we gain elevation. Then once I get to Mount Victory and run my tests and move it to the middle of the roof, you can see when I come back into town, it does a much better job. Again, it's not scientific, but I do like to run this particular test because I don't actually have to speak on the radio and it gives me an idea of how well it is getting out. Another uh, test that I've done is going all the way around the lake with certain antennas just to see how well it does based on distance and topography. But this is a shorter test and uh, it gives me some idea. Again, about average here, but definitely needs to be in the middle of the roof to get a good ground plane like most antennas. Well, let's wrap this video up and see what I recommend it uh, from Amazon. So as we saw, folks, this is a $29 antenna. It's got the orange doodads, dual band. If you're in the market for one of maybe your first antenna, 
and you're interested in something that is going to work reasonably well, I don't have much bad to say about it. Uh, I wonder, again, about its longevity, but you never know. It might last you a year or two, and then by that time, you might be willing to really plunk down some money if you felt you had a need to do so. But here's $29, pretty decent antenna, and I was not impressed with the performance, but was happy with it. It's basically an average performa. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope to see you next Friday or whenever we put out another video. 73.